Well, 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 look what decided to show up. Four XERs. Let the games begin. It's like Christmas morning, Bruce. For a toddler. I don't have enough hands. Look at that. We have another all black unit here, <laughs> just like the assault. We're gonna get it uncrated and we'll get to a detailed video on it. Here we have someone, some lucky persons, another XCR. This one is the color that I think a lot of you guys ordered. What's going on guys and welcome back. So as you saw from the entry of this video, we have probably the most awaited sled of the year in the Polaris lineup, and that is the Polaris Matrix XCR. So it's the first model year for this in this platform. Polaris has had it in the Axis platform, but not in the Matrix platform. Platform. So this year, that was a super eye catcher for a lot of people and we did, or I, I say we, Bruce and Southside did get a bunch of orders for these. So. We have two of them sitting here. They are both 650s. They're both 128s. But we're just kind of going to touch on what makes an XCR an XCR, who needs an XCR, and who would, you know, benefit and like an XCR. So, like I said, we have two. One is this blue and red, which I think is a super popular color. If Right? Oh, yeah. 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 A lot of that. So, that's why we decided to put one together so we could show you guys. And then we have the all-black XCR as well sitting next to it. The, like I said, they're both 650s, 128s. They came in a 128 option or a 136 option. Both of these consumers both decided to go the short route. So this one has a, and these are a 1.6, correct? Yeah, that's a 1.6 Cobra. Yeah, that's a 1.6 Cobra, and this is a 1.3 Cobra. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a 1 and 1.75 option. I, I think there was, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So neither of them have these, but... This blue is really impressive, actually. And whoever ordered one, you guys are going to be super excited, you know, super pumped. We had it outside before, and it really pops in the sunlight. So what makes an XCR an XCR, Bruce? Well, the main thing is a spring and shock package that's in these. And so everything is set up probably 20, 25% stiffer than a VR1 or an XC. Uh, you know, you again, 100 pound springs in the front compared to 80 on a VR1 or an XC. Uh, and shock package all the way around is stiffer, plus the high low speed adjustment for the clickers, which we went over yeah. a bunch of with uh, some other shocks yeah. that we went through. High speed, low speed, so you have two adjustments there, one adjustment, which we've gone over before, but I'm just going to point it out in case anyone missed it. Yeah. So, well, also, what they did is you have a um, uh, a rail that has a lot less holes in it, so the rail is a lot more sturdy as far as any type of bending or flexing for somebody that's a more aggressive rider. Because the idea of an XCR is a more aggressive rider, I and mean, that's that's what it's set up for. It's better better brake disc, better brake pads, um, you know, a few chrome molly parts in it, 
it's, it's so this is your this is the ultimate high performance trail machine from polaris yep yeah so the the idea behind this being a 128 or a 136 is is um you know when you look at a, a vr1 or an xc which is 129 or 137 it's just a reminder of there's no difference in the in the length of the rail. There's no difference in the length of the sled between a 128 or 129, or a 136 or a 137. It all just has to do with the pitch of the track. So on an XCR, they elect to go the old style 2.52 2 2 pitch compared to a 2.86. Um, 2.86, sorry. Uh, 2.86 pitch. So that that little bit of change makes quite a difference. I mean, you go from from say 51 paddles on this to 45 on a 129. And again, no difference in rail length, no difference in tunnel length. It's a matter of how many patches you have. And on an XCR, they always put this on because they have more paddles on the ground, which allows you, if you stud it, you have more stud on the ground. And that's something that they've always done. Whereas a, a 129, the track is lighter and it's again more for the normal trail use works fine uh, and when you go 136 or 137 it's the same reasoning um, again same rail between the two same tunnel between the two the only difference is the pitch of the track and putting more paddle on the ground mm -hmm. yeah so I mean, I mean you could look at it just just in this sense you know there may be three or four less contact patches if this was a 286 pitch so it's just contact patch on the ground yeah Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that's been like that for forever, right? Mm, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in here you have your billet rear coupler blocks, which on a VR1 or an XC. Get to know Siri at Apple.com. Thanks, Siri. Uh, yeah, so this here is a solid aluminum coupler block with a connector between the two. Right. So when you go on the other units, you're going with a, a rubber coupling block and the uh and without a connector so the idea behind this is because this comes back and comes in contact with the coupler block it's pounding it all the time just just hammering it well on normal trail use it's not a problem but if somebody that's really beaten up on it what'll happen is you can basically pigeon toe the rail in because it keeps hitting against that so it bends the two in well they put an aluminum connector on it so that doesn't happen mm -hmm. just solidifies that rear yeah. Yep. And then four wheels back here rather than three. Right. So again, just keeping it more solid, more in line for somebody that's more aggressive. Yeah. And then also beefed up down here is the front torque arm, I believe, too. Yeah. Yeah. Front torque arm. And um, these, these pieces right here, which is the shock rods that follow the shock, these are thicker also on this than they are on an XC. Yep. And you have two, you have two limiter straps instead of one, Yeah. Mm -hmm. which on a VR one or an XC is just going to be one, which you've done, you know, you guys have seen enough videos of my VR one from last year and it, you know, it only had one, mm -hmm. but again, you know, these rear shocks have high, high speed and low speed adjustment. Yeah. Not rebound. No, yep. No, no rebound. No rebound adjustment on any of these. And then this year, unlike other years for XCR, uh, they actually made the rear shock a needle shock, which is other things that we've talked about before with uh, making it making it more plush just over that small movement, basically going over those small bumps so that you're not upsetting the rider. It's just moving under you. Been like that on Pro S's for years, been like that on the VR1s. Um, they, are, they did elect to do it on XCR this year on the rear track shock. So it'll be a wh whisker softer for low speed, which isn't a bad thing you know it just makes it conform a little more yeah it's going to make those those tiny bumps not feel so violent and so harsh mm -hmm. is pretty much what they do it for yeah but other than that you're you know the, the sled itself is the same as you know a, a, a matrix vr1 yeah you have two different gauge options on the xcr you have your standard gauge which is what this blue one came with and then you have your 7s display as many of you are fans of that came on this XCR. So there's two different options there. Um, we pull a side panel, show brakes. Yeah. I don't know if we could see how different they are. Yeah, it's a full rotor rather than a wave or a chiseled looking rotor. So. Yep. So you have your solid. Yeah, it's it's round, completely round. Whereas the other ones are more of a wave or lighter. But you know, for heat and what you're 
you know, what you're trying to do is, um, and you know, if you're a more aggressive rider, this is set up brake wise to handle that. Yep. So it just, it took the awesome platform of the VR1, you know, the Matrix VR1 and, you know, Matrix XC and just beefed it up for those super, super aggressive riders. And that's, you know, that was their, that's what they marketed and that's what they're, you know, that's what they built it for. And it's super exciting. I have one on the way. Bruce has one on the way. Yeah. Bruce, you got a 128, correct? I did, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also 650. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Bruce got a 650. I, as I've talked about before, I got, an 850 136 in the all black, which it won't stay all black, but that's what we ordered it as. But that's a secret until that time has come and we have the sled in our hands and then we'll, and then we'll talk about that when we're tearing it down. Yeah. But super excited to get on these things. They're gonna be, you know, a monster. And also you guys are probably looking at this and going, man, these windshields look different. Yep. Yeah, the, we finally have a low one for Matrix this year. So this we did not have last year. We had the first windshield we had was a medium, which was that, which worked really well. I mean, uh, you know, some some windshields are ugly. That wasn't an ugly windshield, and it was, and the height of it was really good. Um, but so basically made another mountain mid, which mountain mid was very popular in Axis. So now they've made that now in Matrix. And that is a good-looking windshield. That's a very, yeah, super, very good-looking. Yeah. And looks like it'll give you still a decent amount of wind protection yeah. as well, which is which is a plus. Yeah, it's gonna this year it's gonna wing it over you mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And then we got we just got in uh, one of the adjustables, so we put it on this assault here just to show, and it literally has a um, you know that much adjustment there to go. Yeah, so you and when you're sitting on it, when you pull it all the way up, you're definitely going to be, you know, tucked in behind it. Yeah, this here, it's, it's going to wing it off you, but this here, you know, it's definitely going to take it off of you. And then these here are really big, and it's, and it's not only big here, but it's big here too, so it's definitely going to keep the wind off of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to throw that little windshield clip in there because we didn't have those options when we originally did that no. that windshield clip, which I'll put that video up here in case you guys wanted to see that. Um, but that's really it for the XERs, guys. You know, they're just, uh, they're beefed up, awesome version of a, you know, an awesome sled. So we're excited to get our hands on them and get some seat time on them and, and see how they are. But as for that, that's really going to do it for this video. As always, if you guys have any questions, if you want to know anything, drop a comment in the comment section and I will get back to you uh, as fast as I possibly can. If I can't answer it, I'll get with Bruce, but I'll get you an answer one way or another. So that's going to do it. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.